Okay. Uh, Dr. Warren Farrell is um, uh, with organization with Georgia Parents for Kids Rights Incorporated. Uh, Dr. Farrell is on by Zoom, so we will go to him next. I just wanted to say before I started um, that I really appreciated Chairman Welch that you asked questions that included both personal motivations as you did with uh, Representative Clark, um, as well as questions that can allow your subcommittee to sort of prevent unintended consequences. I often find those, those two areas are so important and often not included. So I just wanted to acknowledge you for that. Um, I'm gonna be citing um, conclusions of some studies, uh, but since I don't wanna bore you with uh, citation details, I arranged um, for complimentary ebook um, versions of the boy crisis where I have all these citations included. So you can check anything out on, um, to, see, to see what the exact studies are, but I didn't wanna take up the time of the court to, uh, this, of this subcommittee to do that. Um, so if I were, I guess if I were to take 14 years of research and boil it down into the four, what I would call the must do's um, after divorce, um, I would, I, these would be the four must do's. First is that um, equal, equal what I would call equal time. Uh, children, that children have approximately equal time. It doesn't have to be exactly, but that equal time includes about an equal number of overnights uh, with each parent, exactly what uh, re um, Representative Jasmine Clark had actually received, uh, even though the, the court did not um, assign that. Number two is no bad mouthing, um, that neither parent bad mouths the other in a way that the child can detect. And that doesn't just mean words, but body language that is dismissive or discounting of the child. Uh, those seem to be detected in studies that are done four, five, 10 years after the, after the divorce that children can still remember, like eye rolling, emotional withdrawal. Um, Third, Girl, I'm not, I'm, I'm not yeah. divorced, but um, that, that goes on in my own family. I'd probably do that to my wife. And I, I'm not sure I'm going to we'll be able to cure that one, uh, both in marital uh, families or in divorced families. But uh, I, I appreciate what you say. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, third is proximity. And we saw that with uh, what happened uh, with Representative Clark uh, received, that the parents live close enough to each other that the child doesn't have to uh, forfeit friends or activities to see the other parent. Um, the children that did that um, usually resented going to the other parent and they lost the benefits of the social, um, the social skills and so on that, that develop in the friendships. And the fourth is more, a more recent finding uh, that, that, the children, that the parents be involved in consistent couples communication counseling or relationship counseling, even when there is no emergency. Emergency-based counseling only tends to not include the best intent of the other parent and only leave both parents sort of angrier at the other one, whereas consistent counseling allows the best intent to be sort of more, um, um, more fully appreciated. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit more time with the time issue first uh, because that's you know, the, the core issue that's being, being presented by the bill. And if I were to sort of be a little bit um, fun in my la language here, um, what the, the, the an analysis of sixty an analysis of sixty three studies published in um, in the Journal of Marriage and Family concluded that the children benefit more from quality of time with dad than the quantity of money from dad. In other words, time trumps dime. Mm -hmm. That the more equal the time, the better. It is true that 35% is the minimum, but those same studies found that the closer it gets to 50%, the greater the benefit occurs. Uh, a meta-analysis meta -analysis of the best studies found that if children cannot live with both parents together, um, a minimum of a third of, um, of a child's time should be spent with each other. Um, however, additional benefits tend to accrue all the way up to the 50-50. Next is overnights. Um, uh, 110 of the nation's leading researchers, um, coordinated by Dr. Um, Richard Warshock, um, looked at all the data and concluded that, uh, and this was a consensus report, which uh, anyone that knows academics knows that it's almost impossible to get two academics to have consensus, no less 110. They, um, and they issued a consensus report stressing the importance of not only more time with fathers, 
but more overnights in particular. Overnights allow the children the full benefit of both parents' very different styles of parenting. In the Boy Crisis book, I sort of um, document nine different styles of parenting that dads have and moms have, that both moms and dads are very suspicious of the other parent's style because they don't understand the value of the other parent's style. And the children that tended to do the best are ones that, I, that have what I call checks and balance parenting, where the children are, are the, where the parents are discussing the value of each of their styles of parenting, like roughhousing and boundary enforcement. And the other parent can appreciate that, those differences and incorporate them rather than dismiss the other parent and feel that other parent has negative intentions. Um, the, the, the data shows that the biggest disaster from the child's perspective is loss of contact with a parent. Children express intense dissatisfaction with the traditional arrangement of every other weekend. I'll spend a minute on the bad mouthing issue. Um, some, I'm often asked like in high conflict relationships, shouldn't one parent be in charge? And an analysis of 43 studies that looked at exactly this issue concluded that even when there were high levels of conflict between the parents, uh, children in shared parenting families had better outcomes on measures of emotional um, intelligence, behavioral adjustment, psychological well-being, as well as better physical health, like less likelihood to be obese, less likelihood to commit suicide, less likelihood to be depressed, um, less likely to be addicted to video games, uh, addicted to porn, and so on. Um, I'm often asked, will switching homes destabilize children? And that's a legitimate question. And when I started the research, I thought that that might be the case. Uh, but we now have very thoughtful studies, particularly of adolescents and pre-adolescents, where that's most likely to occur, finding that the, uh, the stability that children are stabilized by the lack of the other parent much more than they are stabilized, than they are destabilized by geographic um, uh, going from one home to the other. Um, put another way, two parents in two homes um, has turned out to be much better than one parent in one home. Um, the, uh, on the, in the actual bill itself, um, I, I, I noticed line 18 saying, if either is not willing to participate in the arrangement, the judge may consider alternative forms of custody. And I'd like to suggest that that's sort of a setup for one parent being unwilling um, and, um, to, to, to cooperate and a return to traditional divisions that, un that undermine the children, uh, that we, traditional divisions like the ones I just talked about. And in line 70, uh, the desires of a child, um, if, uh, if, if such a child is of appropriate age of dis and discretion, and discretion um, that the desires of the child being considered obviously is a wonderful thing, but the desires of the child being too important is a setup for two things. Is one is parental alienation so that the child can speak negatively about the other parent. And second, children wanting to be with the parent that gives them the most candy, the most privileges, the most leniency. Uh, when I um, got married to my uh, wife, um, I, she had two children by a former marriage, and I uh, asked the children, um, you know, what, what would make, and they, they were about 11 or 12, um, what would make you want to be with your dad? What would make you want to be more with your mom? And they immediately said, both of them agree, which they were very rarely likely to agree, uh, that it's, you know, I'd be much likely to be with our, our dad because he lets us go to R-rated movies and he lets us have lots of popcorn. We want to be with my mom, our mom because she's more lenient and she gives us more candy. And so it was like <laughs> not necessarily the exact, um, um, but it was very, it was very um, educational to me. I list in the uh, Appendix B of the Boy Crisis 50 plus developmental challenges uh, that are experienced by dad, what I would call dad deprived children. Um, all of them are, are documented, but I want to share 10 of them that I think are really relevant to this committee. They're each about a sentence each. Um, number one is that children with father loss have, by the age of nine, a 14% reduction in the length of their telomeres. That is, the telomeres inside the cell, the cells that we each have, that are the most 
reliable single predictors of life expectancy. By the age of nine, the telomeres in children that have a lack of dad involvement are 14% shorter on average, but the telomere loss um, is 40% greater for boys than for girls. A major study of ISIS recruits found, number two, a major study of ISIS fighters found, concluded that almost all male and all female fighters had in common some type of an absent father syndrome. And it doesn't take a you know, brain surgeon to figure out that they're looking for something, a, a sense of purpose that they didn't have in, the, in, in their own home. Number three, when children le live only with their dads, the parents are only one ninth as likely to have conflict as when children live predominantly with their moms. Number four, the more frequently a father visits the hospital of an infant who was born prematurely, the more quickly the infant is released from the hospital and the better the infant's social, personal develop and the ability to adapt within a year. Number five, students coming from students coming from father present families score higher in math and science, even when they come from weaker schools. Number six, father involvement is at least five times as important in preventing drug use than closeness to a parent, than parental rules then parental trust, trust of the parent, then the strictness of the parent, or a child's gender, ethnicity, or social class. Number seven. Dr. Farrell, how many, how many more steps in this? I just three, 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 three more. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, six, uh, so four, uh, four more, basically four more sentences. A study of boys from similar backgrounds revealed that by the third grade, the boys with fathers present scored higher on every achievement test and received higher grades. Eight, living in a home without dad has a greater correlation with suicide among teenagers than any other factor. Number nine, dads tend to, reinforce, to enforce boundaries. Toddlers whose Dads set limits and enforce boundaries as the children explored, had better social and emotional skills 12 to eight months, 18 months later. And last, the more interaction a boy has with his dad before the age of six months, the higher his mental competence. That's all I want to say. <laughs> 10 strong reasons why dads need to be dads. Y yes, yes, I, very well said. So, uh, Dr. I don't want to. I don't mean. I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm. I'm uh, if there's a concluding statement you'd like to make, I'd like to offer you that time to you, and then we'll we need to move on to some other speakers. We're going to take a, a, a just a few minute break, um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to conclude by four o'clock. So I want you to be mindful of the remaining time in this in this session. Yes, I, I think that I don't want to use up more of your time. There's a number of other people wait, important people waiting, and. I hope I've just given you information that then you can feed, um, you know, with your greater knowledge about how to adapt it to the um, uh, to the bill. Um, I hope that will be helpful. Yes, Dr. Farrell, thank you very much. And there will be, a, I'm sure there will be a bill introduced in January and there will be subsequent hearings by this subcommittee or other subcommittees on the matter. So there will be more information and more opportunity to speak on this. This is not the only hearing that will be held. I'm sure that Representative Clause will introduce another bill um next session so there will be an opportunity to continue these discussions